home stretch of this major league baseball season live right here on this thursday on the early line on sports grid donnie right side is here i am here mm -hmm. and our mlb insider and the host of newswire craig mish is here as well craig always glad to have you here on this thursday listen you're our local correspondent who on Tuesday did mention the weather this week in South Florida expected yeah. to be gnarly. We'll get to everything around MLB in just a moment. But down there in the Miami area today, what's the weather looking like ahead of Thursday night football? Oh, it's bad. It's bad. And you know that 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 stadium, Hard Rock Stadium, has an opening in the middle. I know they made it more fan-friendly to cover uh, the fans, but not the, uh, not the players. But I would say that that field, generally speaking, is A-plus in terms of turf. Uh, over the course of the years, Hard Rock Stadium. So rain is not going to necessarily affect the turf, but it could affect the play. It is supposed to rain tonight, at least for the early part of the game. So, uh, you mm -hmm. know, maybe first take a look at some first halves, uh, I, I would say. And, and also it could affect games in college football this weekend. It's been raining a lot here. Uh, you know, F FIU plays FAU this weekend in the Shula Bowl. And so that's something to keep an eye on wow. as well. We will keep an eye on all of it, Craig Mish. We appreciate you not only for your MLB expertise, but your weather as well. But, of course, we must talk a little bit of Major League Baseball here down the home stretch with just about two and a half weeks remaining. Do not run, walk around all of the daily bases. Craig! <laughs> Although when it comes... Yeah. To running around the base path this year, Shohei Otani has been mm. sensational. Last night, Craig, for the Dodgers, avoiding the sweep against the Cubs. Otani had a couple of RBIs, a solo home run, and a stolen base. 47 homers, 48 stolen bases. He is three home runs and two stolen bags away from making an exclusive club around MLB, becoming the first player ever in the history of the sport to have 50 homers and 50 stolen bases in the same season. The Dodgers have 16 games remaining. Will Shohei Otani start the 50-50 club in MLB? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not a matter of if he's going to do it. It's when. And, Ben, wouldn't you know where the Dodgers are next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday? They're right here my backyard mm, so wow. I, I i think i i think i'm going to that like i don't, I don't think i'm gonna yeah, yeah. i mean I, I think i gotta catch that in action so i mean if we're looking yes yeah, donnie uh so yeah so <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little havana donnie it's a little havana okay so go back to your hoagies. Go like... well, back to your hoagies it's in Little There's Havana. only one road down there, Craig. It's A1A. It's A1A in South Florida. A1A, Beach, right? South Florida. You know, you know, you know what? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. Do you know where that all started, yeah, the idea of South Beach and everything else? I, I mean, it may be too young for you, Ben, but, Donna, you would know, I think. Do you know where it all started? <laughs> I, 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 I know. What, did it start with Vanilla Ice? Like, where did it start down there? When was Vanilla it? Vanilla Ice. Way before that. Way before that. The idea of showing those South Beach and those shots of the video, of going, it mm -hmm. all started with Miami Vice. That's where it started. Ah, so Miami Vice mm. in the 80s. That's, that's where Mel it started. Miami Vice, Miami Vice, close. Yeah. It should have ended. Exactly. It should have ended there, too, honestly. Uh, but anyway, mm. so Otani, two, he's two steals away from uh, 50. I think he'll probably get that before he comes to Miami next week. But my guess is, Ben, I, I think he'll probably be sitting on 49 home runs heading here to South Florida. I think I'm going to witness history. Oh. Heck yeah. It is. I mean, a 50 50 season is absolutely incredible. And Shohei Otani, again, next year is going to add to the mound. Is the next 10 MVPs going to be and Shohei Otani in the National League? We're certainly going to find out. But also, you take a look at the Atlanta Braves trying to fight for their playoff lives right now. The hits just keep on coming here. Ronaldo Lopez to the IL. It was an elbow before, now it's shoulder. You're going on the IL mid September. This is devastating news. But also, Craig, is there a chance he comes back, or is this basically shutting him down the rest of the way? It doesn't seem optimistic to me at this point when you have a shoulder injury to a pitcher that's forced to go to the injured list. Because, again, if you think about it, he's going to be gone for almost two weeks. Then there's a build back yep. up. I mean, if the Braves, mm -hmm. Donnie, were to get deep into the postseason, could he come back as a relief pitcher or something along those lines? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's possible. But I, I got to tell you that the Braves, whatever I, I know Braves fans are upset they're not hitting, and, and that's another story. But if there's ever a season – to give a mulligan to a team, it is the Atlanta Braves this yeah. year. I, I don't know mm. any other team where you can lose the best hitter in the league, the best pitcher in the league, and then have all these other issues to injuries and everybody else. And we're talking about Acuna and Strider 
the fact that the Braves are still even in this thing is remarkable. Snicker should get manager of the year votes. I, I know that the fans are upset. They have not hit. Riley has not hit the way they thought. Olsen has not hit the way they thought. Harris has not hit the way they thought. I can keep going. I, I got to give him a mulligan for the year. Yeah. When you look at Reynaldo Lopez, even when he was healthy, he didn't go deep into games. He would flirt with the innings requirement to be included in the statistical leaders in MLB. But he has a 203 ERA. That would be the best in MLB by a large margin. And the Braves already have the ERA leader and the presumptive National League Cy Young Award winner in Chris Sale. Craig, when we look around MLB on this Thursday, only eight games. And in terms of that National League wild card race, where the Braves are now a full game behind the Mets for that third and final spot, all of these teams except St. Louis, who is holding on by a thread, are off on this Thursday. But you see who they play this weekend. When we see you next week, and on Monday following the weekend, will the National League wild card standings look any different? Not much, but I, you know, I, I don't think the Cardinals are getting in. So you know, every other team is alive. Uh, you know, Cubs were very good at this point last year. Then they fell apart the last two weeks. I'll still keep them alive. But Ben, all those teams that you just listed there outside of St. Louis, I think have a shot. If we are looking at games tonight here, interesting. Seattle climbing back into the AL West race, which is important for them to mm. pick up a victory. But how about this? Kumar Rocker of the Texas Rangers making his Major League Baseball debut tonight as an underdog. The expectations for Kumar Rocker for you, Craig, what are they? Yeah, it, it's the opposite for me. And I saw six and a half totals in some places, too. And, and Miller, for the, uh, who was mm. pitching tonight for Seattle, last six starts, three different times, no runs, and one other time with one run. Uh, he is too good. And, and again, you're backing a rookie pitcher here. I'm never a guy that's laying minus 150 virtually in anything, baseball, football, basketball, so I don't care. But if I had to do it, it would be taking Seattle today. I like the look, Craig. And thank you for not correcting me on Tuesday when I said Kumar Rocker was making his MLB debut <laughs> on that evening. And I mixed up in my South words, Beach. and it's actually on this Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Craig will be on South Beach watching the Dolphins tonight. That's for sure. More on the early line next. Both of these rivals walking it off last night. It's where we start our baseball breakdowns on this short Thursday slate. A ton of teams have the day off. Only eight games on this Thursday. Half of them during the afternoon hours, but not in New York tonight in the Bronx on what should be a beautiful evening inside Yankee Stadium. A rivalry renewed between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Eight and a half is the total. Although rivals DRS, New York was rooting for Boston this week in a midweek set against the O's. The Red Sox took two of three against Baltimore. The Yankees a game and a half lead as they took the rubber match last night in extra innings against KC in the American League East. What do you like in the opener between these two familiar foes? I think we can get some runs tonight, and also particularly the Yankees need some runs tonight. Yes, they won last night. They'll take that each and every night, but it hasn't been that explosive Yankees offense that we're used to, and I think they can get back to that tonight. If we're looking at the card, it's a very short card. 14 pitchers, Ben, have pitched over pitched. Over the past 60 days, with a minimum of 20 innings pitched, the worst pitcher on the card, that's Cooper Criswell, who's set to take the bump here tonight for the Boston Red Sox. 40 innings over those past 60 days, 4.05 ERA, 5.15 XFIP. That should get him in trouble. But who does he struggle against? He's actually been very good on the season against left-handed batters. So, yes, Juan Soto might have a good night. Austin Wells could have a good night here. They're both left-handed batters. We're focusing on those right-handed batters. We talked about the MVP this year. Of course, Aaron Judge, 70 at-bats over the last month. Still very good numbers against right-handed pitching. Hasn't had those power numbers that we're so accustomed to. But maybe tonight is a chance where he gets back to it. An RBI prop, my favorite pick of this game, is probably going to be Aaron Judge to record that RBI. We're hunting right-handed batters to go up against Chriswell. But I do think we can get over the 8.5. But I'm focused on the Yankees bouncing back at the plate. And that starts with Aaron Judge. Plus 250 for Aaron Judge to hit a home run. It has now been 15 consecutive games since number 99 in pinstripes has gone deep. Tied for the longest drought in his MLB career. He has been stuck on 51. Shohei Otani giving him a run for his money when it comes to the home run leader. Plus 250 the number. It was well below two bucks when he was on that tear in the middle of August. Again, the Yanks a game and a half lead in the American League East over the Orioles. Tyler O'Neill been adding it up in the home run in power department for Boston. The Astros DRS just a three and a half game lead over the Mariners right now in the AL West. 
Houston has dropped three straight, including the first two of its set at home at H-Town against the Oakland Athletics. Trying to avoid the sweep today, who do you turn to? From Valdez, who gets the start today against the A's. You can see the Astros booked as greater than a $2 favorite. Does Houston end their three-game skid and avoid the sweep today against the Athletics? Yes, they do. And yesterday, there were two RBI guys I loved on the Houston Astros. Neither one of those got an RBI. They end up losing that game. But I do think a bounce back is in order today. Why? Because it's Framber Valdez on the mound. You take a look at his last 60 days, Ben. A stellar 1.83 ERA and an XFIP of 2.53. That covers 59 innings. He's been nothing short of spectacular. If you look at his last 30 days, ISO against an 012, which is microscopic through 96 batters. You take a look at the weighted on base percentage, 171. Strikeouts. How about this? He's a left-handed pitcher. Left-handed bats going up against him past month 46 percent strikeout rate that's astronomically good you take a look at the oakland lineup tonight and say how can they fare forget about going up against framber valdez one of the better left-handed pitchers in baseball just lefties in general you have lawrence butler to lead off at a 308 iso power number to weight it on base percentage of 440 which is spectacular after that just about every single batter in that lineup really struggles with left-handed pitching run line for the houston astros today they bounce back in a big way because framber valdez is absolutely Absolutely elite. I was going to bet that. As, I was literally going to say bet the run line. Fra- yep. Framber Valdez has made 13 starts since the end of June, including his two final in that month. The Astros have won 12 of 13. Valdez himself has won 9 of 13. Yeah. In his last two starts, 14 innings of work, 7 in each. He has allowed two hits and not a single earned Run. I think the Astros avoid the sweep, and I would not lay yep. the heavy juice at minus 240, but minus one and a half with a much more available number. Tarek Skubal, the odds are not even available anymore to win the American League <laughs> Cy Young Award. If Valdez was pitching like this all year long, maybe, but Skubal and the Tigers also playing good ball, a minus 290 favorite today, DRS, in the Motor City against the Rockies. It's kind of funny the way you preface it there because I actually thought maybe the number was taken down because this game will be so easy for the Tigers to win that sports books don't even want to offer the game tonight as how it plays out. Scooball, dominant left-handed pitcher. The one thing we know about the Rockies outside of Colorado, they typically can't hit, and they certainly can't hit left-handed pitchers. I'm going to look for a dominant performance by Scooball. How about a run-line Detroit Tigers today? How about that? Well, I'm going to sprinkle a little parlay in that bad boy. 